yeah the rest of them are not really going to be touched in this lesson you can mess around with them if you want uh, I'm going to move on since we are burning time like you wouldn't believe next I'm going to go over animation real quick once again I'm only going to cover the basics if you have not watched the After Effects one uh, lesson please go back and watch that because the principles of animation in cinema are exactly the same as that in After Effects uh, I'm gonna this this guy is starting to bog me so I'm gonna add that compositing tag again and click scene by camera to get rid of it so as you can see it's still affecting my sphere here but um yeah let's let's move this sphere so I'm gonna select it and if I move it and move down the timeline we can see that it's just not moving in time what we have to do is come down here and click this little key which is a keyframe and as we can see now we have this little uh, blue icon on the timeline and if I move down into time move my object here and then click on the key again you can see these little dots have appeared to represent movement over time and that is really as simple as it is um, you can once again keyframe just about anything in cinema that's the basic movement if I wanted to um, let's see change the radius maybe if you see these little circles remember how I told you there was a stopwatch in After Effects well in cinema we have these circles and if you hold control on the Mac I'm not sure what that key would be on the um, Windows check your instruction manual if I click on maybe radius at frame 1 command click can you see we've got a red frame indicating we've made a keyframe for that go to 25 maybe crank this up to like 280 it's gone yellow which means that we've edited it but we haven't added a keyframe and there we go I'm gonna left click and once again this is represented by the keyframe on the timeline and our sphere is now ballooning up as well as moving and that's really simple it is uh, you can get a far more complex view of your timeline by going here clicking timeline and uh, yeah this is one for the advanced users you would uh, roll down whatever the parameter that you want to see in detail is here we have it in our kind of keyframe view you can change this to different views like graphs uh, yeah I wouldn't recommend you get into that straight away this kind of view along the bottom here should be enough for you really uh, I'm gonna delete all these keyframes go back to frame 1 and delete so now we once again have no movement. Uh, let's have a look. If you do not want to, um, let's say you just want to affect the move, or you don't want to affect the move, now if I make a keyframe and this is unselected, then let's have a look. Let's do that and move down in time, make another keyframe and now we'll see that even though I've made a keyframe for the movement between these two points it's not happening and that's because I have this unchecked and so that's really useful so if you want to change maybe the rotation when you're messing around with your keyframes but you don't want to mess with the uh, position animation that you've already made then you would uncheck one of these and that comes in really useful uh, that's just about it to be honest let's let's assume that we have our uh, masterpiece here I'm going to create a, a very crude bouncing ball yep Pixar won't be contacting me about this but um, we have a very crude bouncing ball and let's say that's our animation we have everything framed how we want it um, by default your animation will render out of here out of this window so if I hit command R I'll think yeah yeah that looks alright and you know the ball stays in frame just about so I'm happy with that how do I go to render this now well I go up to render render settings and here once again we have a whole world of options that we can mess around with but we are going to be output and here we have the kind of resolution 
if you remember the talk about pixels you can this is where you would choose um, what size your video will be when you render it and we have presets I'm going to choose um, film and video uh, does it really matter what you pick really in fact I'm going to input this manually 1280 720 and your frame rate 25 for PAL, 29.97 for NTSC. If you want, if you want to um, bring this into After Effects and have like super slow motion, just crank the frame rate up to um, really high number, like 90. That's the beauty of 3D. You can basically control every aspect of your animation. And uh, one thing to note is if you want to change your project settings, come up to Edit and Project Settings, and by default as you can see this scene that I'm working in is 30 frames per second if I crank this up to 60 you can see that instantly we've doubled the number of keyframes here and now our ball will seem to be moving at half speed because we have an extra frame in between each point of our animation and you can extend your project timeline down here to whatever you want it's just a case of increasing this number here then dragging this out and now I have way more frames to play with but uh, let's say we, so we've got our project at 60 FPS, we're going to match that here, 60. Uh, film aspect, pixel aspect, you're going to want to leave that, you know, by default. And then you would come down here to your frame range. As you can see, when I hit Shift R or Command R, by default now we are rendering the current frame. What you'll want to do here is select manual and as we can see let's have a look at our animation it moves to about 1 to 8 here so we're going to start at frame 0 and move up to 1 to 8 okay so that's great now let's decide where we save it if we come into save save is ticked tick alpha channel if you want to have transparency in the background so then you can uh, add your background yourself in programs such as After Effects um, let's select the path and here you would um, select the path <laughs> I'm repeating myself it's been a long hour jeez uh, you would select where you want to save your um, file and you could name it bouncing ball and here you have the format it will save in by default we'll save as a sequence of pictures one for each frame and that will work fine when you bring it into After Effects so you don't need to worry about that um, that's just about it really I recommend one thing if I come into here we have anti-aliasing if you want your kind of outlines to look really crisp you will want to select best here instead of uh, geometry by which is up by default best and uh, basically the higher this number the better it is but 1122 two is fine for anything that is animation and your your scenes will take a bit longer to render but trust me in that your scene will look a lot nicer the edges will be less jagged um, I think that's just about it really if I am happy with this now I'm happy with my output path uh, this is saving into a folder I just come into my menu now and hit shift R and there we go our animation is rendering absolutely brilliantly masterpiece and if you don't have this kind of dynamically upgrading screen it might be because you are on an older version of cinema without the advanced render kind of module and as you can see once this is finished if you have 11.5 with advanced render I think or 12 you'll get this and you can just watch this wow that is impressive as far as bouncing spheres go I think that's up there I hope you learnt stuff I hope you now have the confidence to go into cinema and start messing around like I said this really was as simple as I could go even though I've spent just about an hour um, going through stuff here this was about as simple as I could go and I hope that I have given you the tools to go in and mess around. 
uh, there's so many more tutorials you can find out there. If a good resource is Grayscale Gorilla. That's uh, I'm not going to go there now, but if Grayscale Gorilla uh, dot com, and he does that's Nick Campbell. He does fantastic cinema tutorials, and uh, hopefully I'm going to be doing some of my own also. But um, yeah, there's so much to play with if you have the Studio Bundle. This the MoGraph, short for Motion Graphics. This has so many cool things you can do. I can make a cloner object here. Drop my sphere in, and you know by cranking this up to grid array we, we've turned our one bouncing ball instantly into um, let, let's crank this up to 1000, 1000 1000 and you know we now instantly have uh, six balls so um, yeah there's there's just so many things you can do with um, ooh. <laughs> there we go galaxy of uh, balls Right, on that note, I think I'm going to call it a day because I'm just waffling now. Thanks for watching. Um, if you haven't seen the other four introduction to videos, suggest you go watch them. Uh, like I said before, if you want to thank me, just tell your friends about this. Uh, subscribe to my my YouTube, my Twitter, my Vimeo. You can download this video on Vimeo, it will be up. And uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed it and hope you learned stuff and uh, go in and create. Thanks for watching.